All right, fishing friends, this is Sean, the Average Angler, and today we are going to do some more break down the lake uh, at Lake Berryessa. This time I'm gonna hit some stuff in the uh, narrows. Okay, there's some kayak fishermen that like to follow along and they're having a tough time struggling a little bit, so we're gonna see if we can't help them find some fish and catch some fish. Uh, so we're gonna break down a little bit of the narrows. I picked out a few spots in Rag Canyon. Uh, my preference, if I was going out, would be to go out of Rag Canyon. I just think there's more stuff close by. Um, there's some really good stuff down around Markley Cove, uh, but it just gets a long ways once you get through that stuff to move on. And up around Rag Canyon, there's so much good stuff there. And right as you go out in the main lake and then you have the big uh, bay off to the left as you get up there, there's some really, really good stuff up around Rag Canyon. If I was going out in a kayak, a belly boat, uh, are those even a thing anymore? I don't know. Uh, I used to have one. Anyway, that's where I would go out of. Um, Rag Canyon, not to mention you get all the tournaments that go out of there, the fish are released there. Uh, Markley has some tournaments too, they're smaller. Okay, so this spot right here, this is in Rag Canyon. This is really interesting. You gotta remember the water's down about 28 feet. Okay, so take these marks, that says 26. This is 30 to 33 out here, but it, it's kind of a point that's not on a point, if you will, okay? It, it's a point that's coming out of a gut. <clears throat> and it's pretty consistent out here. Right over here where these black lines are tighter, here and here, that means it's steeper drop. I'd be looking around here for fish to maybe be right in, let me turn this this way, right in here, and maybe right in here on the side, possibly right out here in front where it's deeper. Okay, it says 55, take away 28, and you're only gonna have 27 feet. <clears throat> Unfortunately, once you get out further than that, if you look out in here, your contours kind of disappear. But I do find this one really interesting, just because of the fact that it's out of a gut it's not gonna be real visible. And this is the type of place where you could find a good group of fish hanging out. So take a look at this. This is in Rag Canyon. They do have tournaments there, so there are fish releases going on down there. Uh, my preference is just Rag Canyon for a variety of things around there. Uh, and I'll, I'll show you a couple spots in there. I'm not gonna tell you where they're at. Look guys, I'm reading this on Navionics chart viewer i think online okay it doesn't cost anything you can go in there zoom in on the lake take a look at it look around for stuff look for things that catch your eye everybody sees the water different there's no necessarily right or wrong way you can find stuff that i'll probably miss and vice versa anyway it's a good way while you're sitting at home to learn the lake find some things you're interested in without being out there because once you get out there my, my mind wants to go catch fish right i don't want to stare at a map uh, i should probably do it more because the results might pan out but i get out there i want to fish it's it's i'm a working guy i i gotta work for a living and so i get out one day a week and really when i'm out there i want to fish but i i just did this last week before i went to new maloney's and actually the first the two spots that i picked out and did on my preview produced a lot of good fish um actually <laughs> the majority of them uh so it's pretty cool so i just did the same thing um we picked out a couple spots and we're going to talk about them uh okay here's another spot in rag canyon it's actually pretty close to the other spot i just showed you but i am looking right in here okay this is gonna give us the right depth right now and it drops off into deep water really quick. You see this line here is 132. 
this one here that the points on is 82 but take away that 28 feet and we're in the right kind of depth right here okay what's this going to allow the bait fish this is what i've been seeing the bait fish sitting down here in 100 110 120 feet and there's fish in it but it comes up really fast and this is the type of area those fish will hang out right now and you can catch them right now the bait is really deep i'm not sure that the lake is actually going to turn over it's just you know we're just about february here tomorrow is february 1st um and the temperatures they're just too nice um so until that bait comes up out of the deep water uh i i think the you know there's always shallow fish uh, but I just think that it's going to be um, a time to catch them deeper. And there's nothing wrong with that. It's fun catching them deep. Uh, if you don't know how to do it, learning is always a good thing. So you learn how to do it. You add a, a skill to your repertoire. And in the future, when these kind of things come up, you know how to adapt. So the baits I'm going to use for this, and we talked about it in the other video, uh, that Yamamoto hula grub is really hard to beat when the bite's tough. Um, you can keep it simple. Uh, I like the 330. I like green pumpkin and I like cinnamon purple. Okay. Those three colors, all you really need. Um, shaky head, um, with like, uh, a, a four and a half or six inch worm on it. Um, a baby brush hog or the mid-sized brush hog. Uh, little beaver baits, preferably the smaller ones if you're doing it on a shaky head, um, like the baby rodent and the 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 small smally beaver. Um, you can drop shot down there. I I personally try to avoid drop shotting if I don't have to. I don't know. Drop shot catches big fish. It's just not my it's not my go-to thing. I I do do it, but. Um, and if I saw this stuff down there and wasn't getting bit, um, then I may try to do it. And I should probably do it just to try and clean up from a spot after I, I throw my jig and that kind of thing, okay? All right, here's a spot out between the, the uh, it's in the Narrows. It's between Markley and Rag Canyon. And this is the area I'm talking about here. If you look right here, it's gonna give the illusion that the point's gonna come out this way, and there is a small point there. I've fished this area many times, never really paid attention to this. The point actually, this is an underwater point, starts way out here at about, uh, say 50 feet. But take that 28 feet away, and then you're gonna come into this part, and this is way out here is 85 feet take the 28 away so take 30 feet away you're in 50 something feet this is my ideal depth right now this area could be loaded they could be right over here they could be right over here i've been seeing the bait off the deep side of it they could be anywhere out around here but if there's bait around you're gonna find fish up in this area i think what's happening is the bait's pulling up at times and then the bass are feeding on them you'll also see bass in in the bait but this is a really good looking point. And if you look down just a little bit, this one's a lot deeper, but same type of thing, way out into the lake. This is good stuff to find guys. It's a, this is probably a little too deep right now, but this one is ideal. And I wanna provide something for the kayakers. Uh, it's been mentioned to me by, by one of the guys following along uh, that he goes out of Markley. That's why I'm trying to do some stuff down on the Narrows. Not to mention the Narrows are a great place to catch fish and typically easier than the main lake. Now, fishing right now, uh, you want to move the bait slow. You don't want to put a lot of action into it. Uh, the fish seem kind of lethargic, uh, negative Nelly type of mood. I thought that was going to change as the moon went away. Um, so far it hasn't. Uh, the only difference, when they liven up a little bit, you can stop. You can start popping the bait a little more. Um, 
you can possibly slow swim it. Uh, there's at times Barry Esso where I'll cast that jig way out and I just slow, slow reel it. Uh, but keep it moving the whole time. Don't put nothing into it. If it runs over rocks, let it pop off, bounce off the rocks all on its own. Um, the shaky head, you really don't want to shake it too much. Now, here's the cool thing about these deep fish. When you get bit, and we saw this last week in New Malonis, and I've seen it at, at Berryessa hundreds of times. You get these f deep fish fired up, and most of the time, it just takes catching one out of it. Uh, you can sit there and catch them for an hour and you'll find that a lot of times these deeper fish are better quality fish I mean we're talking three plus pound spots and man they're kicking the pants um, it is a lot of line to have out I like to use a I have a a Powell 753 it's a medium action rod uh, I just like it. I'm throwing it on eight pound tests when I drop down that deep. I like it because it's a long rod and I can move a lot of line. Yeah, I'm in my wife's car. She's getting a procedure done, so I have to be here to drive her home. We live too far away for me to leave and come back. So anyway, I thought I'd make the most of my time. Uh, the spinning rod in all of these, you want to do a real set first, okay? You get bit, reel into them, load that rod, and then set. And you don't got a set to swing for the moon. Everything I'm using is an open hook. Uh, the shaky head, of, of course, is threaded through. The hooks poke through, but, you know, it's plastic. It, it penetrates really easy. Uh, I use a frenzy nail. I use an owner shaky head. Uh, the Gamagatsu football heads I get um, from Monster Fishing Tackle. Tackle Warehouse has them. It's just, uh, they go all the way up to one ounce. Um, the half and three quarter ounce, I think, are a two and a three aught hook, light wire. They penetrate really easy, guys. Um, and you kind of need that when you're fishing really deep. And that's why I don't like to use a heavy wire hook when I'm deep, because it's just, even with fluorocarbon, you're getting line stretch. Um, all right. And this is a spot in Markley Cove, as you see marked right up here I think it's uh this is the last little arm on the right coming out of the cove before you hit the lake just up here uh, this point here comes way out that's 136 feet way out here but here it's 56 take away the 28 it's 28 feet so you can be way out here whoops I'm not focusing very well way out here and again, off to the sides is, is, you know, where I've been seeing stuff. I wouldn't pass up on this stuff. Just look for the bait. And I know it's deep, but when you find the bait, those are the places you need to fish. You can go across the way over here. Same deal, okay? If you see bait way out here, go ahead and fish this stuff here. That's something to keep in mind. Uh, the other place I, I'm finding them is on humps, uh, especially if you can find some rocky humps. Uh, they're out there. There's not a lot of them right now. A lot of them are out of water. Uh, a lot of good stuff out of water up on the north end. Uh, but there's a lot of good stuff in the water. And map study. Uh, makes a big difference it gives you it helps you set up a plan uh, let's see what are some other ways you can catch them in this type of scenario the neko rig if you're the patient type of guy that wants to rig a neko rig with a senko and drop a five inch senko okay nothing fancy uh rig up a neko rig with a heavy nail weight in it and drop it down there and again, not too much action, but an echo rig you kind of have to do a little bit with. But don't be afraid to let it sit on the bottom, okay? Sometimes it, if it sits there for 15 seconds, 10 seconds, that's when they want to come over and bite it. And you just got to figure out how they want it. That's that's the whole trick to the pattern. It, it's figuring out how they want it. Once you find the bait, there's fish around. How do we make them bite? Okay, I... I told you a lot of it for me lately it's just been move it real slow um, 
I pull it about a foot, foot and a half, and I, I let it sit again. Um, and a lot of times, that's that's when they get it, okay? Uh, the change of pace, the stopping. They'll see it move, they'll kind of follow a little bit, and then it stops, I, and I think they go, pow! Uh, bass don't like that. It's a trigger, uh, the change of pace. That's why the stop and go cranking and all that kind of stuff is going on. Now, speaking of cranking, It's an alternative, uh, and the chatterbait as well. You find some flats close to deep water, and there are some down on the south end. Uh, some of them are long, slow tapering points. Uh, these can be places where the fish are gonna move up and feed, and then they're gonna move back down. It's really a timing thing. Uh, you know, hit it, make a few casts, and move on. Uh, the other thing in the afternoon, you can find them on crankbaits fishing on steeper banks, steeper rock banks uh, that the sun's been hitting. Um, those are going to warm up a little better, uh, can activate some bait fish up there, uh, some smaller fish, bluegill and those things, and it can get the crawdads out. And, uh, and those bigger largemouth will come up in the bigger spots. Uh, you can bump into some. Uh, so far, what I've seen, it's not gonna be where you're gonna catch a ton that way. You can definitely catch a good one. Um, so take a look at some of these spots, open up your computer or your phone and go on a Navionics chart plotter, I think it's called. Let me see, I, got my, I brought my laptop so I could do this stuff. Uh, and it is Navionics, yeah, web app, navionics.com, um, chart viewer. It'll come up relatively close to your area, then just pan around over to Berryessa and then start zooming in and pick little places out. Now, I did look at the East Bank yesterday, and, man, you take 28 foot of water off over there, and, and uh, it kind of... Kind of becomes featureless. Uh, I think, not saying there's nothing out there, but I think in order to find stuff out there, you'd have to go out there and, and one, either fish it or, or side scan it and try and find a, a rock pile out there and stuff. Because, man, as you get out off the, off the bank up there, all of a sudden it just becomes a straight featureless lake on that side. Uh, all the good stuff is, is up shallower than that. Uh, all the creeks all the, the humps, the trees, all that kind of good stuff that I so love to fish. Um, it's just, it's a barren wasteland right now with the water down where it's at. We really need to get it up another 15 to 20 feet. Hopefully it'll fill. Hopefully we have a crazy March and, and, and February and get a lot of rain. Doesn't look like it's gonna happen. Right now the long range forecast, there's nothing. Um, Anyway, Sean with The Average Angler, let me know if you have questions, if there's things you want me to go over, I'll be more than happy to do it. Until then, tight lines, look for that report coming out on, on my day of fishing Thursday. Like and subscribe, and we'll see you on the next one.